Welcome to episode 24 of From Then To Now, the TEW 2020 save, where we take the World Wrestling Federation from 1992 to the modern day, from then to now. And in this episode we have got Saturday Night's Main Event 31. As Elton John would say, which would be used for a song, song for a wrestling show, for a wrestling show theme song 30 years later Saturday night's alright for fighting I'm looking forward to this show if you're looking forward to this too make sure you hit that thumbs up button it's a pay per view it's a big event on ESPN let's try and let's try and break our light record I don't can't even remember what that is but let's see if we can do it with out a target get I'm excited I hope you guys are too if we look at the screen we can see the previous Saturday night's main event you can also see I managed to fix the pick pack. Yeah, so the actual three story, three matches on the main card were John Nord versus Max Moon, Hogan and Warrior versus Flair and Luger, and Bret Hart versus Dr. Death Steve Williams for the IC title. Ironically, a lot of those same people are on this card. Sean Morley and Duke Drozzi were both in the in the boot camp match on the pre-show. The Natural Disasters were in the post-show and they're facing the Nasty Boys on this show. Miracle Violence Connection had Dr. F. Steve Williams on the show and everyone except for Shawn Michaels in that main event was on the last Saturday Night main event. It's going to be a big show, but where are we holding it? It was Greensboro Coliseum, right in the heart of WCW, well, Jim Crockett, WCW territory. Where are we holding it this time, though? Why, we're back in Lexington, Kentucky. The place which held, uh, actually no, screw it. We're going to go to Rosemont, Illinois, the Chicago base. We've done Lexington, Kentucky for a pay, for a pay per view already this year. I don't want to do repeat too many repeated events. Later this year, actually, we are going to be attempting to do a show in Montreal. From a, where would be probably. I don't know where we'd hold it. We might go to somewhere in the Ontario region. No, oh, we could probably do the Cops Coliseum in Hamilton. That would be good. And obviously, for SummerSlam, we are going to be at Wembley Stadium. We are practically going to be giving those tickets away for free because it's the only way we're going to. Actually, just to be curious, actually. How much would we get in London? We are on premium right now for Sat for Saturday Night's Main Event because this is a big deal show. But say if we were to... Oh, I can't edit. I can't edit it. Because it's deliberately set for the show. That's a shame. So we won't be able to find out. But, yep, we're in the Roseman Horizon. I'm excited for the show. I hope you guys are too. Let's get straight into it. And the show opens with the boot camp match. Sean Morley versus Duke Drozzi. And they go six minutes and it is Morley who picks up the victory. With, it, with a small package with some sort of roll up. As we said, I don't want these guys having finishes yet. But Duke Drozzi is the first person to be eliminated from... The boot camp. So if you pick, if your pick was Duke Drozzi, really? But also, I'm sorry, you were wrong. Drozzi is the first one out. Morley survives by the skin of his teeth. It's a 31 rating, 33 for Morley, 24 for Drozzi. Second match sees the natural disasters defeat the nasty boys. When Earthquake pins Jerry Sags with an Earthquake Splash. Both teams have chemistry boost. Excellent for the Nasty Boys. Great for Natural Disasters. Sags a 58. Nobs a 59. 54 for Typhoon and a 65 for Earthquake. Not too bad. 65 rating. Next up. We've got a segment. Dr. Steph Steve Williams and Terry Gordy come out, and Terry Gordy is in a cast. 
on his left arm because he's got a broken wrist. And so basically, the Miracle Vine is going to say, you know what, we still, want to, we still want to have this match, but what if we do in two weeks' time? Or even a King of the Ring, we could do this match. And Coco Bora and Ironheart are like, hold on, no, no. We fought back from being attacked from behind by two, mis by two mysterious people we only can assume are the Islanders. To get this title shot. And now you're telling us, to well, no, we've waited long enough. We've won our title shots. We've earned this. It's a 58 rating, but... Jack Tony comes on the screen. He's not on, not on this because I don't want to give away the big twist here. And he says, Steve Williams will still defend his tag team titles. With an open challenge partner. Anybody from the locker room can come and challenge and team up with Dr. Death. They will not become the tag team champions should they win. But we aren't going we aren't going to leave them with nothing. Should they win, they get a future World Heavyweight Championship shot at whichever title the King of the Ring winner doesn't pick. So either the, the Intercontinental or the World Heavyweight title, whichever title the King of the Ring contender goes to, that's set for SummerSlam. Whoever answers this open challenge, if they win, they get the other shot. And it is answered by Fujigun and Yokozuna. As we jump straight into the match, it is Steve Williams and Yokozuna who pick up the win when Yokozuna pins Owen Hart with the Banzai drop. And after the match, Steve Williams gets his title and he gets the other title and he goes and gives it to Terry Gordy, who's been at ringside the entire time. And Yokozuna clocks Steve Williams in the back of the head and just starts laying him down and he hits a bonsai drop John Nord at ringside keeps away Terry Gordy but he gets a 67 rating and Mr Fuji grabs a mic and he says they didn't care about making sure Williams defended his tag titles hell I didn't even care that Yokozuna gets a title shot at SummerSlam because of this. Yokozuna would have been in title contention by SummerSlam all anyways. This just confirms it. What they've done is put Steve Williams at a disadvantage. Because in two weeks' time, Steve Williams has to face John Nord. None of the victims of the Bansai drop have been the same two weeks after they get it. Williams, we have just signed... You told us that you were going to win King of the Ring and fill that other shoulder up. No. Fujigun. I'm going to win King of the Ring with John Nord. And he's going to challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. Yokozuna will challenge for the World Championship. And we will leave SummerSlam with all of the titles around the waist of Fujigun. And as he's doing that, he briefly looks down at the tag team title which is over Dr. Death Steve Williams. 
Who knows where that may lead? 62 rating. And the main event gets an 82. Good stuff. This sets up so many more storylines. Oh, and I forgot to fucking book the finish. I forgot to book the finish incorrectly. That's on me. I know I forgot it. The Horsemen pick up the victory. That is correct. Shawn Michaels pins Bret Hart. That is correct. Where Hogan and Warrior are at this point. Warrior's there as a tag team partner. Hogan at this point has been taken out by The Undertaker. Undertaker warned him. Countless times he'd had enough. He'd had enough warnings and now he was going to violence. We knew this. The Undertaker said it on Superstars. Which I recorded an hour before this episode. You know, behind the curtain. I only recorded that Superstars, what, what time is it? Two or three hours ago? And I forgot to book the finish. Fuck! Well... That's the Saturday Night Main Event main card. Horseman picked up a big win. And, well, Shawn Michaels says he wants to go after the IC title. Now he's got a very strong claim, having beaten Bret Hart. It's an 82 racing. Let's move on to the post-show. First post-show match. Bit of, a, bit of a fun little cameo thing. It's Repo Man versus Crush. Former Demolition Buddies fighting. A bit of fun. Genuinely. That's the only reason I booked this match as a dark match. Because I just thought. That's a sort of fun house show match. Which the smart fans. Especially if it was today. Would find hilarious. Because they don't acknowledge that they're both in Demolition. The main event of the. Of the live live show sees John Nord of Fuji Goon team with the Warlords of the Islanders to take on Bob Backlund and British Bulldog. It's four of the people that are in King of the Ring. And it goes to a time limit draw because they're all in King of the Ring matches. I don't want to beat any of them. He says, having beaten Steve Williams on Superstars. But that wasn't against another King of the Ring person. That was... that. So now this show has come out, I'm going to explain, justify that decision a little bit more. I knew Terry Gordy wasn't going to be on this show. I've been false advertising him since his match with Owen Hart a couple of superstars ago. It, since, ever since then, it's been false advertisement. I knew Yokozuna was coming in because I know where I want to go with a couple of the things. Oh, uh, Coco Beware pinning Steve Williams was essentially so that they can... so that High Voltage can say in a couple of months' time, hold up, you didn't have your tag team partner with you. Well, I beat, I pinned you. I think I deserve an actual shot against the actual tag team champions, not drafting in a five hundred pound monster. That was my logic behind it. It was to set up an actual title match between High Voltage and Miracle Violet's collection later down the road because that match hasn't happened because of the injury. But what did we get overall? A seventy four. Superstar Matan in that main event and aren't as good because I don't have much. It's an hour show. So I think we got a 15 minute overrun on this one. But yeah, so it's 75 minutes. And I have and it's four matches plus two storyline segments. I don't have time to put Hulk Hogan promos in, which will boost this rating up. It's annoying, but that's part of the Saturday night main events deal. 
I'm a little upset about it, to be honest. But I want to know what you guys thought, because I don't care about that 74. In fact, I wish I could just hide it. There, you can't see it now. What did you think of the show? Let me know in the comments down below. And actually, in fact, let's do something fun. You know how TEW rates things. It's 0 to 100. Why don't you tell me what you would score this show? If you were a fan watching this on ESPN in 1992 you got a, a four and a bit star a four and a quarter star main event a decent tag team match with a storyline for the big monster and a continuation of what I think has my, been my favourite storyline to book the maggots so let me know what you thought what is your rating of this show out of 100 and I'll see you guys as we head towards King of the Ring I'm excited for that. I hope you guys are too. Goodbye.